Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in with me and joining me here in the Facebook Live on this Promise LA page. Um, thank you for for those of you who have been joining in since the beginning of the year. I just appreciate your 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 faithfulness and joining me th these afternoons as we go through God's Word. Um, happy Valentine's Day for all of you. I hope you're gonna you have some great plans, even though. Not a lot of restaurants and everything are open here in Southern California. Wherever you are, I, I pray that you have a great day. I know to, to a lot of people, it just seems like just a regular day. Uh, but you know what? Uh, set some time uh, to, to just say I love you to the people around you, especially your significant other. Um, we all need one another. Amen. And so today I am excited. I am really excited to, to start a new series. I, I love the old series. I really did. As we, we finished off our Waymaker series last week, uh, as we continued on this theme for Promise LA to uh, to be a, a repairer of the breach and a restorer of streets. And so these next few, these next first, these few months in this uh, 2021 are, are really going to talk about, you know, building us up and, and, and repairing the, any gaps and whatnot uh, in our lives, in our walk with the Lord, because let's face it, before we could be a restorer of the streets, right? We and, and to to be used in our city, the city of Los Angeles, we 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 we've got to fix whatever is inside of us so we can testify uh, and and have a good testimony of the people uh, that we we are called to minister to. And so that's really it, it, what what these all these series are about as we continue on in this 2021. And and, and never forget that it is a story about grace. It's about God's grace working in our lives and through our lives to bring us to a place where not only he can be glorified in us, but he could be used by us. And I'm so amazed how how God can would want to use knuckleheads like myself for to have eternal impact and bring the kingdom of God on, into this world. And and so uh, we've, we've been going along with that theme of being a repairer of the breach and a restorer of the streets that we might be used in the big city, this grand city that God has called us to. And so today we start a series called Power Play, you know, and and no, it's not necessarily a play on words from hockey, even though I know that the, the hockey playoffs will be starting here pretty soon. But it really stems from a word which God spoke into my heart uh, while I was sitting in church over a year ago. And 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 really it's this, it's a it's a rhema. It's God was speaking through a, another pastor, and 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 the word is this. If you're taking notes, um, the the word is this. If God has you from the inside out, Amen. If He has you from the inside out, from from your inside your heart to your outward actions, if God has you from the inside out, you will receive power, protection, and provision. If God has you from the inside out, you will receive power, protection and provision the, during these days that we live in how many of us need some of that amen uh power to, to 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 keep on keeping on to persevere amen to 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 uh, for protection there's a lot of stuff going out there in this world that could endanger our very own lives and the lives of our family and provision you know we we have no idea what this world's going to be coming to over these next few years is it these last days is it not um, you know, what's happening in our lives, in our, in this world that we live in, we all need the promise of provision. And, and so this is the word that God has given me. And, and one thing I, I know about myself and my walk with God, that if, if, if I feel a, a word from God coming to, I, I want it to be consistent with the word of God, amen, his written word, the Bible. And if I can find a word that is consistent with that, then I believe it's from God. And, and yes, I did. Find that I found I could back that up with scripture, but let me let me give you a sneak peek of what's going to happen over these next few weeks because I'm going to give you a little bit of a of a review and overlay of this series of what it means to have power, what it means to have protection, what it means to have provision, but what does it mean for God to have you from the inside out? What does it mean for from Him to to, to have your very own intentions, your motivations, your action, you know? And and here's what I'm going to tell you if you're taking notes. I would 
I would actually encourage you to do that. What, what from the inside out requires is repentance. It'll require faith and it'll require perseverance. It'll require repentance. It'll require faith and it'll require perseverance. And we're going to spend these next few weeks talking about that because without those things, he doesn't have you from the inside out. And if he doesn't have you from the inside out, then then the hope of having power, protection, and provision in your lives, um, I'm not going to say he doesn't bring it because he is a God of grace, amen? Uh, he is a God of his own, uh, what he, whatever he pleases, he does is what the Bible says. But But when God has you from the inside out, you can be assured of his power, his protection, and his provision in your life. Now, I told you I can back that up with the word of God, and and, and that's what we're going to be studying today. Today, we'll be in the book of Deuteronomy. And if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy. It is actually, I believe, the fifth book of the Bible, the, the last writing of Moses. And it's actually Moses' last address to the people of Israel prior to going into prior to going into the promised land. For 40 years in the wilderness, Moses led the people of Israel uh, through trials, through experiences, uh, through uh, having a uh, fire by night and a cloud by day. For 40 years, Moses dealt with the, the people of uh, Israel, their rebellion, their sin, their, their bickering and complaining. For 40 years, Moses... Uh, uh, led the nation of Israel throughout the wilderness. And, and this is his last address to the nation of Israel, because if you know the story, uh, Moses had one falter, which prevented him from going into the promised land with the people. And, and God just basically told him, you're not going in. Because of that, you're not going in. Uh, Joshua will now lead the, the nation of Israel. And so before Moses was, was, to, be, was to be separated from the, from the nation of Israel, uh, and, and, to, and to be buried by God himself, to, to, to leave this world and to be buried by God himself, he, he writes the book of Deuteronomy. And, and, he, and it's his, his farewell address, if you will, to the nation of Israel. Now, many scholars could say that the book of Deuteronomy is split up into three sermons. Three sermons. And, and I find that amazing because... Uh, you know, the book of Deuteronomy is rich in a lot of different things. And just to basically say it's it's divided up into three sermons is, is astounding to me. But, but in simplistic form, the first sermon recounts the last 40 years. Again, all the experiences, all the things that had happened, all the, uh, all the travels and, and, and everything that they experienced with God. And, uh, and so Moses recounts the last 40 years. The second sermon reminds the people of their need for God, that they, they actually need God in their lives and, and that they ought to remember him as they go into the promised land. Don't forget God. Remember all that he's done for you. And remember the law that he has given you to be obedient to the law, you know. And then the final, the, the, the final sermon or the final part of the Deut book of Deuteronomy it, it, it offers comfort. It, it offers comfort to the people because saying, hey, look, if you fail or you true, or you find yourself to be unfaithful to God, restoration is still possible if you repent. Restoration is still possible if, if, if you turn away from your rebellion and you turn away from your sin and, and you turn away from, from, from the, th then you turn back over to God, then restoration is possible. And, 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 you know, that's a word for a lot of us, amen, that restoration is, is indeed possible. And with all these sermons and with all these messages that, that uh, Moses gives to the nation of Israel, he's basically ha asking, in a, in a nutshell, does God have you from the inside out? Does he, does he have you? Does he, does he have your motivation? Does he have the intention of your heart? Does, does he have your actions? Is, is, is he dictating everything about you? Does he have you from the inside out? You know, and he's and he's telling them with all that he has told you these past four years, with all the the voice of how how he has how how he has brought you out of, of bondage and from the land of Egypt with a with with a with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and how he chose you. 
to be his people among all the other nations in the world. He chose you, even though you were the smallest and the weakest. He chose you because he loved you. And how and and, and he and he and how he had loved you with an everlasting love. With all that he has told you, does he have your heart? Does he have you from the inside out? With all that you experienced, with with the parting of the Red Sea, how he's rescued from you from the enemy. With with the again with the fire by night and the clouds by day, with with the water coming out of the rock and and with his constant forgiveness during your journey, all the things that you have experienced and all the things that he has told you and he's promised you, does he have you from the inside out? And we could draw application to that, Amen. Because through God's word and as 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 followers of Jesus Christ. We've heard the word of God. We have, we, have, we have read it. We know his promises of how much he loves us. We know his promises to, that he gives to those who are, who are believers and followers of Jesus Christ. We, we know his promise, how he fills us with the Holy Spirit, that we could actually hear from him and we could know his heart and we could know his love, not just for us, but for the people of this world. Many of us, if we're, if we're truly honest, we could say that we have actually experienced what it means to be delivered, to have the weight of sin and the guilt of sin to be to be released from our shoulders and our in our lives. We have experienced his favor. We could testify of his goodness, of him working in our lives. We could we could talk about his promised blessings, that that which he had promised to us is true because we've we've actually received some of those promises and we continue to do so. We can we could draw application and and understand what what Moses was talking to the Israelites, and and because of that, if God has us from the inside out, we could receive power, we could receive protection, and we could receive provision. And we and I told you we're going to be in the book of Deuteronomy, but more specifically, we're going to be in the Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight. It's the famous or infamous, depending on how you see this, the blessings and cursings chapter of the Bible, where God says, here's what I promise you if you obey me, and this is here what I promise you if you disobey me. And and, and for, the, for the purposes of this message, we're just going to talk about the first 14 verses of, of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, because we talk about his blessings. We could talk about his power protection and provision in our lives if indeed he has us from the inside out so we're going to go into that but before we do that let's go to god in prayer shall we father in the name of jesus we give you thanks and we give you praise thank you for your goodness lord thank you for your grace thank you for your many promises of blessings dear lord and, and all that you have in store for us today dear father god as we kick off this series and we and we start this message, I pray that you would be with us. I pray, dear Father God, that your presence would go before us, dear Father God. Bless and anoint this message, I pray, Lord, for it is of you and for your glory, dear Father God, that we do these things. Bless this time, we pray, God. Um, may, may it be once again that, I, that, that you would hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that you would increase and that I would decrease. Help me get out of the way, dear Father God of what it is that you have in store for your people today. For those that are within the sound of my voice, Lord, whether now or later, that you administer to their hearts. Speak to them, dear Father God, like you never have before. And let it be that with, that they would they would leave this time changed, Lord, and 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 different from when they from when we started. Bless this time, dear Father God, we pray in Jesus name. Amen. The first thing we talk about again is is you know what, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Let's let's go through uh, and and read through Deuteronomy chapter eight, beginning what verses one through fourteen. It says this that it, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all His commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you when you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. 
Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your, of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall, be, shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Then shall they shall come out against, against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings on, on your storehouses and all of which you have set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he had sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord shall will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body and in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Verse 12, the Lord will open to you his good treasure, the, the heavens, to give you the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after the other gods to serve them. Boy, those sure a lot of promises, aren't they? And we could dissect those things. We could we we could unpack these verses to talk about to talk about the blessings of power, protection, and provision. Of power, protection, and provision. And um, it, it it says here in verse one, if you if you, if you diligently obey and you carefully observe, not out of compulsion. Not out of following a set of rules, but because he has you from the inside out. He has you from the inside out. Let's go to these real quick, shall we? Uh, the first promise he, he promises to give is is power. Is power. Maybe not the power that you you and I think, and especially when I first read it. But in, 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 in verses 9 and 10, it says, The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth shall see you and, and that are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. I think that's an awesome verse. It's an awesome verse. The word holy, the holy people means a, a people set apart for God's purpose, set apart to him. Amen. This is call, God's call for you and I. It's some churches use a fancy word called, word called sanctification, meaning to be set apart as holy. In, ver, in verse 10, it says, the people will see that you're called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. You know, when I think about that verse, I think of uh, uh, some movies that I used to see as a as a kid, you know, like The Godfather, you know, the mafia movies, right? The Goodfellas. I, I used to have a, infatuation about those things because i love the 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 atmosphere i love the the camaraderie the the oneness if you will of, of being loyal to one another you know regardless if you were you were the son of the godfather you were son of the the the, the head of the family so to speak you know um as long as you operated in a, in a way that that was uh consistent with the values of the family consistent with the the, the the principles of the family the interests of the family you had an authority and a power to operate you had an a, a authority and power to 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 conduct yourself and and whatnot and, and i love that part i understand that the goodfellas and the godfather are was you know their crime families and they did a lot of evil things i get that i i believe me i'm not excusing any of those things but it was the it will what what they portrayed with within one another is what what I really liked seeing was was the loyalties to one another in in most sense they were loyal to the head of the family 
they were loyal to the to the person that 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 started everything you know and and that's what we're called to do is is that when we when we operate in a way that is consistent with God's values his principles and his kingdom interests that we receive power from God the power from the from the holy spirit is what he is what he gives us in in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 7 the apostle said paul says that he became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. That God's uh, effective working of his power was working inside Paul as, as he became a minister of the gospel. Now, you know what we, we've used in the past, if you've been following uh, these messages, that we've been talking about that word power quite a bit. And and, and some versions of that defini- the, the definition was is that dunamis, meaning dynamite, right? The explosive power of of God working in us uh, as we as we live this life for Him, and, and but this this uh, definition of power in this in this verse is, is slightly different. It's slightly different because the when when you look up this definition, it's not the word dunamis, but it's the word exousia. That word exousia means authority. That you have authority. To use the power, let me explain it this way. You know, say I was on a on a, a mission trip, and and I left my car keys here at home, and um, my my sister is here, and she sees my car keys. Now she by by having access to my keys, has the power, the dunamis power, to go and use the car because I'm not here. You know, and I would never find out. If, if if I'm gone, and as long as assuming that that she doesn't get into an accident or tickets or anything else like that, or nobody spots her and posts her up on social media, then she has the power to to be able to use any of those vehicles because I left my keys here. However, unless I said yeah, it was okay, she never had authority. Does that make sense? You can have power, but not authority. See, we have access as 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 uh, believers in Jesus Christ, as those who have sworn uh, to be followers that He is our Lord and Savior. We automatically we automatically have power from the Holy Spirit. He, he the the once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our our sins are washed away, and the Holy Spirit comes to to reign in us, to live inside of us. And we have power from the Holy Spirit. The question is, do we have authority? The Bible says we do. That when God starts to work something in us, as we start to live lives for him and and and, and for his glory, that he gives us authority by that same power of the Holy Spirit. Did you know you have authority today? You have permission to, to use God's nature and power in your lives. That means we have authority over sin. We have authority over condemnation. We have authority over temptation. We have authority over the devil and his minions. We have authority over all those things as children of God. We have authority over death. Did you know that? Oh, I know people are dying every day. I get that. I I get that. But because of the promises of God, because of eternal life, we have authority over death. Death will never separate us from, from God because there is... God gives us a hereafter, amen? He gives us eternal life. And so we we have authority. He gives us power to, to, to live our lives, to go through our lives through any of the obstacles, to go through any of the weaknesses, to go through things that we normally wouldn't have the power to do for on our own. He's given us power, amen? In Luke 10, 19, it says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Isn't that crazy? That God would give us authority. That God, we who are who are temporal beings, we're the Bible says that one day we'll we'll put off this tent, this body, and 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 we'll we'll become eternal beings. But for now, we have authority. We have authority, and I I want you to come away with that. I know there's going to be questions when I when I preach this, and and I want to invite you to continue to to dialogue with me. To if you have any questions, what does that look like to you? What does that look like to me? 
We have authority over anything that would keep us from the will of God. We have authority over addictions. We have authority over sickness. We have authority over things that are of this world that weren't meant to be for you and I. We have authority over these things. The second thing I want to tell you is that we have God's protection. We have God's protection. Verse 7 says, The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. He said, he will cause your enemies, he will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated. God gives us the victory, amen. You know, when I think about that verse, all I can think about is, is, is this great nation that we live in. Oh, I know a lot of you who will be listening to this message are like, really, is it a great nation? I see so many other things that's contrary to that. I get it. But when this nation was formed it was formed on christian principles believe it or not I'm not saying we're a christian nation please don't send me any letters or or put any uh comments below about when i say that but it was founded on christian principles christian ideals christian intentions and when i think about that and uh, and i think about some of the some of the conflicts we've been in throughout the years and you could start with the american revolution itself did you know we weren't even supposed to win that? The, the 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 American armies, I guess you can call that, the the troops were how were outnumbered almost ten to one. And and we weren't we we weren't even supposed to uh, supposed to last, but yet not only the American Revolution, but the War of eighteen twelve. The 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 colonists once again went against one of the greatest army military powers in the whole world at the time and won could it be that 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 god's promise protection that if god's promise of protection was was with the uh, 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 american colonists during that time because they truly that god truly had them from the inside out you know i think of of world war ii and the battle of iwo jima how they were supposed to conquer that hill you know i've seen documentaries and movies of that i mean they were they should have been been killed off as they were being shot at from the top of that hill but yet they came away victorious because the enemies were were defeated and 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 you know i i believe that's god's promised protection over those who 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 god has from the inside out and you and i you and i have that that same promise as well you and I have that same promise, Proverbs 16, Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Did you hear that? When a man's ways please the Lord, meaning when he has you from the inside out, he makes your enemies be at peace with you. The people that dislike you, the people that mistreat you, the people that are envious of you, the people that ha don't have your your best interests at heart, whatever beef that they have with you, whatever whatever the offense that they, they that they have against you, whatever dispute they had, will be gone in the name of Jesus. Why? Because if your ways if your ways please the Lord, He causes He causes your enemies to be at peace with you. Uh, we have a common a common enemy as well, which is the devil. You know, the, the Bible calls the devil the, the wily serpent, the great deceiver, the, the accuser of the brethren, because that's what he does to us. He accuses us. He, he deceives us. He, he, he tries like he, 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 he tries to be, a, 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 you know, to get us off course, to scare us even. He, calls, he wants to come to discourage you. To discredit you, you know, he comes to he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But even that, even that, even the devil, God promises protection. James 4 7 says this, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I want you to get that process, okay? Submit to God. Submit to him. Then resist the devil. Don't fall into temptation. Don't fall into sin. Don't don't fall for his tricks and, and 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 his methodology in your life. Don't fall for any of that, and he will flee. He will flee. Resist him. 
Say, no, nah, whatever he's tempting you with, whatever he's trying to try, trying to get you to feel and to and to do and, and try to conduct yourself, resist it. Resist it. If you know that it's against God's will and against God's ways, resist it, submit to God, and he will flee. So many people, uh, even, even Christians, they, they would like to give him a lot of credit and say, oh, the devil had me. Oh, the devil spoke to me and I couldn't resist it. Oh, he, the devil made me do it. You know what? He has no authority over you. You've been, if anything, you've been given authority over him. He's a he, he's a toothless lion. He's a defeated foe. And I know he's mad as heck to, that I'm I'm preaching that way. He's angry because I'm I'm telling the truth to the people of God who who he's had under his thumb thumbnail for years. But he has no authority over you. Submit to God. Resist him. And he will flee. He will go away. I know it sounds harder than than it really is, but it really is that simple. Oh, there are times in my life where where thoughts would come, where 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 dreams would happen to torment me, where 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 things that weren't even true that he would he would somehow try to speak into my ear and and cause doubt to happen, cause anger to happen, cause division to happen. And, and I would just come and I would I would talk to God. I would pray to God. I would play worship music. And it would remind me who really is in authority. It was never him. It was never him. It was always been God and it will always be God. And, and God offers you protection if you will just let him. If you would submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. The third thing is provision. Is provision. You know, and I think the word provision really falls short for what God promises because what God promises is more of an abundant provision abundant blessing versus go to verse 8 it says the Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and into and, and all which you have set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you go down to verse 11 and it says and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods and the fruit of your body the increase of your livestock and the produce of your ground and in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain on your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend to many, but you shall not borrow. That means if, if, you're, if, if, if you don't have a job today, God will give you a job. If you're working for somebody today, God will bless your 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 working and 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 your integrity as you work for somebody else. If if you have a business, God will bless your business. He will increase you in so many ways. He will increase you financially. He will he will take care of you. He'll open doors for you. He will increase your income. He will increase your family. He will show favor in all circumstances. So much so that you will never have to borrow from money again. Not from a department store, not from a credit card, not from your family, not from your friends, not even not even from your own savings. He says that 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 uh that, that you'll be the one to lend and not to borrow. How many of you know that's a that's a great promise from God? I can't wait to see that even happen more so in my life that if God has you from the inside out. If God has you from the inside out. That, that he promises to bless you abundantly. Your storehouses, your, your job, your business, your family, your household, everything. He promises to give you provision if God has you from the inside out. And, you know, and I can speak about those blessings. And I, Come on now, for, for many of you who know me, I'm not one of those prosperity preachers, but this is a promise from God. He promised you abundant provisions. And a lot of you would would come and say, well, Pastor Daniel, what about those who are homeless? Did God not have them? What about those that are in third world countries? Did God not have them? What are those that are struggling to make, make ends meet, but yet they're in the church and they're serving and they're doing all this? Does God not have them? You know what? I can't speak to that because I don't know. I'm not God. God knows who what he's doing. And I, and I believe that when God promises, he is the ultimate promise keeper, like we talked about a few weeks ago. All I know is that for me, for me, 
when 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 I had given my heart to the Lord, God has had not failed me yet. Am I walking in the in in the abundance of provision? Not yet, but I could see that coming. Not because I see things happening in my life, but because I trust God. I trust God that that He will do exactly what He says He would do. If you will just devote yourself to Him, to what it means that from Him having you from the inside out, these promised blessings are for you. These promised blessings are for you. And I I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you that 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 as we go through these series, you know the promises, the promises of, of power, of protection, of provision in your life that you will find in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Those promises are 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 the are the same for you and I, for those who are in Christ. But here's what I want you to do. I want to I want to give you a challenge uh over these next few weeks. Stay listening to this series. Whether you're listening to it live or you're listening to it later, um, uh, get in there and start listening. Because here's what it's going to require. For God to have you from the inside out, to have your intentions, your motivations, your your actions, for God to have you from the inside out, it will take repentance. I know a lot of you don't like to hear that word, repentance. But next week we're going to talk about what truly is biblical repentance. What does that mean? It's not as bad as you think. It's still about grace. Amen. So stay tuned next week. Join me next week as we talk about biblical repentance. We're going to talk about faith. What does it mean to have faith? We're going to talk about a, a great story, that a great story in the Bible of, of, of what it means to have faith. And we're going to talk about perseverance. To persevere through. That no matter what things look like, persevere through. Don't quit. You know, see yourself through. See yourself through. Stay tuned to this series. Be open to what, to what God may be speaking to your heart. Don't doubt anything, okay? And expect great things for God because we serve a great God. Amen. I want to pray. Um, I want to pray. And, and before I do, again, as I do every week, every week, I want to pray for those who, who who need to handle your business with God today. You need to handle your business with God. And it starts with Jesus. Amen. It starts with Jesus. Because Jesus Christ is the is the only way to the Father. And Jesus makes a way. Uh, he, 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 how do I say this? He, he He's the one that made access into the Holy of Holies, the very presence of God. When Jesus Christ gave up his spirit on the cross, the 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 curtain that that separated us from the very presence of God was torn from the from the top to the bottom, basically saying that God has done the work. And he's done the work for you and I for us to go into the very presence of God. And it's into that very presence where he offers you these promises for your life. And it starts with knowing Jesus. It starts with with accepting him as your Lord and your savior. And so I want to ask you today, have you accepted him as your Lord and your Savior? Have you accepted him uh, the, 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 to, to ask him for the forgiveness of your sins? We've all done it. We've all sinned. This is not a shame talk. This is not to make you feel guilty and to co- coerce you to doing something that, that you don't want to do. Because we've all done it. And we all need a Savior. And what I want to tell you today is that your Savior is waiting for you. He's waiting for you to come home. He's waiting for you to to accept him into your life. And so today, I want to share with you that this, I want to lead you into a prayer. And and again, it's nothing magic about the words that I'm I'm saying. There's nothing like 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 a spell or anything like that. But what matters is your heart. That, that you want him in your life. You want God in your life. I, I, again, the, when, when Moses was speaking to, to the nation of Israel, he, he exhorted them. He, he pleaded with them to, for, to remember God and to remember their need for God. And, and today, you have a need for him. Whether you want to admit it or not, you have a need for God to be saved, to escape the, 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 the judgment of this world that is to come. 
And he wants you to escape that. He made a way for you by, by sending Jesus into the world. And so today, I want to lead you into a prayer. I want to lead you into a prayer because he so is madly in love with you. He's so madly in love with you. He wants to spend all eternity with you. You could, you could spend today with a loved one and get all the, the flowers and candy and gifts you want, but you'll never, you'll never understand true love until you, you walk with Jesus. And so today I want to, I want to share uh, this prayer with you and I want to lead you into this prayer. If that's you today, just repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your blood that was shed for my sins. As I truly believe that you are the only Son of God, I truly believe that you went to the cro cross to to pay my sin debt to the Father. I believe that, that you rose again three days later. And because of that, because you live, I can live for all eternity. No more sorrow, no more death. As I accept you now as my Lord and as my Savior. Fill me with this Holy Spirit that I may live the rest of this life for you. Give me the power, give me the protection and the provision that you promise as I will live the rest of my life seeking you, pursuing you, and serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was you and you uh, you prayed that prayer with me today, I just want to ask you to to maybe leave me a note um, under the comment section under this message or send me a, a note via messenger um, or you can also uh, email me on promiselosangeles at gmail.com and uh, I promise you that if if you will do any of those things I, I want to get some material into your hands I want to get a Bible into your hands I want to be used as a resource for you if you have any questions if you're struggling, I want to pray for you. Um, I want to be able to, to to walk this walk with you if you if you would allow me to, and uh, and know that and understand that God has some great things in store for you. For the church, uh, for those of you who already know Jesus and you've been walking for Him for quite some time, I pray for you. I pray for us. I pray that God would would overshadow you with with His Holy Spirit that we may understand what the great things he has in store for you and I as we choose to serve him, amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I thank you, Lord, for your church. I thank you for your people, Lord, that are that are listening within the sound of my voice. I pray, oh God, for your blessings upon them. I pray, oh Lord, that you would, you would fill them with your Holy Spirit. Show them, dear Father God, and reveal whatever needs to, to be worked on, what some adjustments to be made in life, dear Lord that we may be able to, to embrace all that you have for us. Show us, dear Father God, what is keeping us from all your promises that you have so much had in store for us, even before the beginning of time. Bless us, we pray, Lord. Minister to our hearts. Give us a great week, O oh Lord. Let us be drawn closer to you than we ever have before, as we choose to give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, everyone. Uh, God bless you guys. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Uh, have a great Valentine's Day. And um, if during the week uh, you are in need of prayer, uh, please join us for our Thursday night prayer meeting. We've been having some great times. God has shown up and uh, we've been having some great times during prayer meeting. And so if you're on this page, you'll, you'll, you'll get some uh, announcements that are posted during the week. Uh, of how to join us via Zoom on our online prayer meetings, okay? So I want to invite you to come to that. God bless you guys. Um, you know, if there's anything I could do for you, please let us know. Definitely be glad to do it. God bless. Have a great week.